The U.S. Census found nearly half a million Latinos live right here in Indiana. And I went through state archives and found this community dates back to the 19th century. And as I found out, a historian's own family tree tells a story of Latino Hoosiers. Sometimes it's the little things that keep us rooted to our ancestors. So we think she's from the 1930s. A doll stitched together in the Hoosier state nearly 100 years ago. So when we opened up the steam trunk, you know, there was a little tray and there was nothing but doll parts. So like heads, arms and legs. And I'm like, what, what is this? It was one Hoosier's act of kindness for her homeland, su patria, Mexico. Her name is Maria Picon Reyes. Don't you forget it. <laughs> That's who took these doll parts and sold them together for kids affected by war. The profile is beautiful. She's special to Indiana historian Nicole Martinez Legrand because that's her great great grandmother. Definitely made me very proud. She was one of many Latinos who came to Indiana at the start of the 20th century. There's push, there's pull, and there's stick. What is pushing these people out of their native homeland? What is pulling them into the United States? And what is making them stick into certain areas of our state? As early as 1890, the census records Latinos in the U.S. By 1910, the Mexican Revolution pushed people to Indiana for safety and work. Newspaper article here in Indianapolis says 100 Mexicans living in Indianapolis. And so this article talked a lot about the Mexicans here being uh, university students. Education later pulled more Latinos from Mexico and Central and South America to the Hoosier State. These would be their children. As an Indiana Historical so Society staffer, Nicole researches Latino Hoosiers and their stories. You know, they are the American story. They are the, you know, the American dream. There is my grandfather. After two years of work across the state, the Lake County native discovered her own family tree rooted in Mexico and flourished in Indiana. And that really has deepened my sense of pride, not only to be a, you know, a Latina, um, to be of Mexican-American heritage, but to be a Latino Hoosier. Her great-great-grandparents settled with their kids in Indiana Harbor, probably around the 1910s. Nicole's great-grandmother later married Antonio Medina. The couple welcomed a baby boy, Nicole's grandfather. And then also you see rail lines. Like Nicole, her great-great-grandmother was proud and invested in this community. So literally, this is the book that helped build the church. With this ledger and fundraising, her great-great-grandmother helped build the state's first Latino Catholic church. That was in 1927. It still stands tall today, a reminder of what Latino Hoosiers have built. We have been here for over 100 years. Latinos in Indiana have influenced anything from legislature, education, business, pretty much in all the sectors, whether you um, explicitly um, recognize it or not. But Nicole really hopes you do see her and know Somos Hoosiers Tambien. We're Hoosiers too. A lot of people wanted to be heard. And hopefully you're listening because Nicole's research, it also includes learning more about Latino Hoosiers. So if your family has questions or made a significant contribution, she wants you to reach out and to do that, head over to fox59.com. That's where you'll also find this report and others celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. And then on October 11th, tune in for our special celebrating Latino Hoosiers that starts at 11 p.m.